In this video, we're going to look at a problem involving related rates. So what we have in front of us is a word problem, and the prompt says that an 11 foot ladder is leaning against a wall. That's all we have so far. And then it tells us that if the top of the ladder slides down the wall at a rate of two feet per second, which is what I have written here, how fast is the bottom of the ladder moving along the ground? So we're trying to find this, this kind of like how fast is moving along the ground when the bottom of the ladder is exactly four feet from the wall. So what we have here is almost a instantaneous snapshot of a part of this problem. The ladder being 11 feet will not ever change and this constant rate of change here, this two feet per second, is not gonna change. It's given to us in the problem, but the instantaneous snapshot that we've gotten, that we've obtained rather with this diagram is that this is the moment when the bottom of the ladder is exactly four feet from the ground and what we're trying to find is how fast the bottom of the ladder is moving along the ground at this point. So the reason why this topic is called related rates is because we're trying to do just that. We're trying to figure out a way when given a problem like this to look at the rates or the different measurements that were given and figure out a way to relate all of them. But before we get too far into that, I want to try to tie some variables, some kind of some uh, names to these different values that we have, just so we know what we have and what we need to find. So what I want to call this right here, I want to call this H. This is the height of the wall that we have going on here. And then what we're going to call this four feet is X. So we have X is four feet. And then H, the height of the wall, is something that we don't really know right yet. Uh, we don't know uh, when the ladder, the bottom of the ladder is four feet from the wall at what point the top of the ladder is at the wall, which would give us our H value. So our H values told us from the ground to the top point of the ladder here, that would be our H, like the height of the wall where the top of the ladder makes contact with the wall. Okay, but then what we also have is we have this rate of change of two feet per second. And what this is telling us is that the ladder is sliding down the wall at a rate of two feet per second. So what we're gonna call this is we're gonna call this our change in H with respect to time. So as time moves on, the height of the wall that we're talking about, in this case, again, the height of the wall means where the top of the ladder meets the wall, it's decreasing two feet every second. So the rate of change with respect to time of the height is two feet, but the question gives it to us two feet per second and it tells us it's positive. But in the context of this question, the height is actually decreasing in value, right? So we don't really call that a positive two feet per second. We're gonna say that's a negative two feet per second that our rate of change is talking about in this question. And again, the reason for that is because the height of the wall is actually decreasing. Whereas if we were to use the two feet per second, that would tell us that our height is increasing as this is happening, which is not what our diagram leads us to believe. Okay, and similarly to how we found dh dt, this value that we're trying to find here, this question mark that I've denoted it as, we're gonna talk about this as the change in X with respect to time. Because as the ladder continues to slide down the wall, the bottom of the ladder is gonna slide across the ground, right? And it's gonna get farther away from the wall here. So this is our change in X with respect to time. And what we should expect is this answer to be positive, right? Because as this ladder slides down, the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall is gonna keep increasing. So what we're needing to look for is we want to check to make sure that we're going to get some type of positive number in terms of our feet per second here. But we're going to look for in our answer to make sure that we get a positive number after we do all the solving of this question. Okay, so now that we've tied different names and variables to different things, we need to ask ourselves, how can we relate all the stuff that's going on in this problem? And well, what we have is we have one side length of a triangle and the hypotenuse of a triangle. And the reason I say hypotenuse is because we can assume where the ground meets the wall here, we can assume this is a right angle. And the reason for that is because we've kind of made the assumption that this ladder is sliding along a smooth surface. So the ground is flat. And then normally when we encounter any walls, they're gonna be standing straight up, right? So we kind of are safe to make this assumption here that this is a right angle and we're dealing with a right triangle. So when we have two side lengths known of a right triangle and need to find the third, what theorem, powerful theorem, do we usually use in order to find that? And we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And in this case, it would read x squared plus h squared equals 11 squared, right? 
because we don't nearly need to go through the trouble of giving our um, length of our ladder a variable name because it's going to stay constant throughout this whole process. It's always going to stay 11 feet. So we don't really need to worry about giving this a variable because that's going to stay as a constant. So what we can actually do is we can take care of that 11 squared and write it as 121. So now that we have this function, this equation right here that we have, which is the Pythagorean theorem but catered to our specific case, what we're going to end up doing is using this function here and deriving it with respect to time to incorporate these different related rates that we have here. Because we have, if we differentiate h with respect to time and x with respect to time, we're going to have to incorporate these different rates of change here, and it's actually going to help us to plug in dx dt because that's what we're solving for. So once you've found a way to relate all the information that you're given here, that's what you're going to differentiate. And then we also want to keep this in the back of our minds because it could help us solve for another value later on as we move on in this problem. So like I said, what we're going to need to do in order to incorporate our different rates of change with respect to time, we're going to need to differentiate this equation here with respect to time on both sides. So let's scroll down here and give ourselves a little bit more room. We'll try to keep that diagram in frame as best I can. But what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So we have x squared plus h squared on the left side, and then we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of 121. Well, when we take the derivative of a constant with respect to some variable, we get zero, right? So that was simple enough. But then when we take the derivative with respect to time of this left side, we're going to use the fact that the, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative. And so now we're deriving something defined by x or defined by h by t. So again, what we're going to use is that Leibniz form of the chain rule to rewrite this and then use implicit differentiation. And we remember the generic form for Leibniz form from a couple sections ago when we talked about chain rule and then we saw it again when we talked about implicit differentiation. So we're just recycling that idea and bringing it here. So how this is going to look for our question is we're going to take the derivative of this function x squared with respect to the variable that it's defined with, namely x. And then we're going to multiply this times dx dt. Right? This is kind of how the Leibniz form follows. We take the derivative of our function with respect to the variable that it's defined with and then multiply it by the derivative of that variable that we defined our function with with respect to the original variable we're taking the derivative of. It sounds like a mouthful and it gets confusing, but this is what we're dealing with in this form. And it's similar to what we're dealing with in terms of the derivative of h squared. We're going to take that derivative with respect to h and then multiply it by dh dt. Okay, and we get again this equals zero. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take care of this derivative and this derivative. So what we get is the derivative of x squared with respect to eight, with respect to x rather, is 2x. And then again, like we said, we had 2x times dx dt, right? And then here we're going to add that to 2h times dh dt. And again, this equals zero. Okay, so we've derived our original equation with respect to time. And this is what we're dealing with here. We have dx dt, which is our unknown. So this is what we're solving for. We have an x value, right? We said that x equals 4 feet, so we know we can plug that in. Uh, we have a dh dt, right? Because we said that dh dt was negative 2 feet per second. But then we ask ourselves, where does this h come from? So you remember how I referenced earlier that we would need to keep this in mind to maybe solve some later on? Well, now it's that time to do that. So what we're going to do is we know that at this very moment, when we're talking about finding the rate of change as the bottom of the ladder is four feet from the wall, we have a side length and our hypotenuse length that stays constant. And so what we're going to do is use those two sides to find our other leg. So what we're going to do is we have four squared plus h squared equals 121. We're going to plug those values into the Pythagorean theorem and solve for h. And then we can use this value of h in this equation and then eventually solve for dx dt. Okay, so here we get h squared equals 105 after subtracting 16 to both sides. So we get that after taking the square root of both sides, h equals root 105. So now that we know that h equals root 105, we have, in the case of our equation here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 variables 
We know three of them, and we just need to solve for the fourth one. So now we can plug these different variables in, their different values of the variables rather, and solve for dx dt. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we have two times four times dx dt plus two times h, which we solve to be root 105, times dh dt, which is negative two. This all equals zero again. So here we get eight dx dt plus two times negative two is negative four, so it's not gonna be a plus, it's gonna actually turn into a minus four times root 105 equals zero. And then if we add four root 105 to both sides, like this, get this to cancel out, so we get eight dx dt equals four root 105, and then lastly to solve for dx dt, let's divide both sides by eight. So these divide away, and we get the dx dt is, and then we can reduce this a little bit, four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two, so we get this equals root 105 over two. And then when we get to this point, we've solved for our change in x with respect to time, right? We have the value, all we need to do is make sure that we have, again, the right sign that we thought it would be, which our answer is positive, so we're good there. We have a positive number. And then now we need to make sure that we tack on the correct units of this question. And in this question, we're dealing with feet per second. So what this answer translates to is the change in x with respect to time is root 105 over 2 feet per second. So that means that at the moment, the base of the ladder is 4 feet from the wall the base of the ladder is moving at a root at a rate of root 105 divided by 2 feet per second. So using all this information that we were given, we were able to find out how fast the base of the ladder was moving at the exact moment that we were 4 feet away from the wall. So like I said, when we're dealing with related rates like this, what the biggest part of the question is being able to use the information you're given, making some assumptions if you need to, like we did with the right angle, and figuring out a way to relate as many of them together as we can, if not all of them. In our case, which we did using the Pythagorean theorem. But sometimes what we see is that's the hardest part. After that, once we reached this equation, it was all a matter of implicit differentiation, finding different values that we needed to find in order to solve our equation. But it was nothing out of our reach of mathematical knowledge. It was stuff that we could take care of. We just need to know what we were looking for. But that's oftentimes the hardest part with related rates questions is that you need to know where your starting point is. And that comes from looking at all the information you're given and asking yourself, how can I relate this together to solve for what I need to solve for?